They do. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. No, ours isn't that way at all. If you, you should look it up because I'm sure if you've got Casey's that somebody serves pizza. I'll look it in. I'll go look it up. And it's, is it thick or thin? Um, it's kind of like hand tossed. So in the middle, it's not thick. It's not paper thin. It's kind of in the middle. Yeah. Okay. No. We are live on Facebook and we've got Dee and Emily with us. Hey, Emily. We were just discussing pizza uh, pizza and where to get the best pizza. From a Uh, gas station, apparently. Now, where are y'all from? (laughs) (laughs) Are you getting your pizza at a gas station? Is it just the Jersey girl that thinks this is a little odd? We can't even pump our own gas in New Jersey. So, you know. Yes, there, it's, we're very limited of what we can actually do at a gas station. I don't know. Maybe that would be a good place to then serve food. No, it's really good. I don't. I don't mm. know why. I wouldn't do sushi at a gas station. <laughs> yeah, Emily is from Wisconsin, and she has a local place called Stucks. Mm. Is that good? Do y'all know that we don't have that in Jersey either. I have is never heard of that. A restaurant, or is it a gas station? Very zesty sauce. Okay, it's a restaurant. Wow. Hmm. Okay. All right, let's get rolling. Another Jersey woman. All right. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Deacon Matt Hallback. I'm a deacon of the Diocese of Des Moines, Iowa, and executive director of catechesis for William H. Sadler. So good to be with you on this Tuesday morning uh, here for our prayer series. Um, those who are new, uh, we welcome you. Those who are not so new, welcome back. Glad to have you. Uh, just a few housekeeping items. You can find out all things about the prayer service at our Facebook page, Sadler Religion Facebook, also sadlyreligion.com slash morning prayers. And all things faith formation uh, during this time of COVID-19 and afterwards at sadlyreligion.com slash online learning. So, so good to be with you this morning. Let's get right to the gospel, which is very short today and focuses again on Jesus and the bread of life, uh, this wonderful uh, theme in John's gospel. So let's prepare ourselves to receive God's word. Let's quiet our hearts and minds. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd said to Jesus, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My father gives you the true bread from heaven for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This uh, John chapter six is loaded with um, this, what they call the bread of life discourse. And it's, it's, a, it's a very strong, prominent, foundational theme in Catholic theology and sacramental theology. We believe that the Eucharist really is Jesus's body and blood, that it's not just a symbol or a sign of, but that in fact, when the priest blesses, this little action here, which has a really neat Greek word called epiclesis, blesses the bread and wine that it becomes Jesus's body and blood. Why is that so significant? Because in John chapter six, this whole chapter, which we get little pieces of, we, we had, I think last week, one or two readings from, from John. And then this week we have two or three more, but John keeps drilling down on this point that it's not enough to, um, receive miracles of Jesus or hear Jesus's teachings and believe and believe that he's the son of God. What is enough is to actually receive Jesus in a very complete way, which is to receive him as the bread of life. And how do we do that? And in fact, later in John, this very chapter, some of Jesus's own disciples start leaving because Jesus keeps preaching on, you have to receive me. You have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. Well, how does that sound to our ears today? Well, you can imagine it sounded the same two years, 2000 years ago. It sounds crazy. 
It sounds like cannibalism. And then we find out in the Last Supper what Jesus actually intends to do to give himself to his disciples. And we, he gives himself under the form of bread and wine. And so ever since then, the Catholic Church has been celebrating what we call the Mass. And, and it's or we call it the Mass of the Lord's Supper. And we receive physically Jesus's body and blood in that what we call the Blessed Sacrament of the Eucharist. So what we're reading about today is something we experience or well now during COVID-19, we haven't been experiencing it because we can't get to church. But this important command from Jesus to receive him as, as, as true food and true drink, that's something that we long for. And it's something that completes us and fills us as, as faithful as Catholics. And, um, and it's something we hunger for. This is really, I don't know about y'all out there, but we've had, I've had such a hunger for Eucharist. Uh, it's almost like an imposed Lent, right? That God has given the church uh, because we can't receive the sacraments like we, we would like to. So my prayer and our challenge for all of us today is that we ask the Lord to uh, make himself available as soon as possible, not just spiritually, but make, it, make these churches open in a safe way so we can receive him. Uh, may this virus go as, as soon as possible so we can get back to the Lord's table and receive the bread of life. Thank you. Uh, let's get to our prayer petition uh, part of the program. Oh my goodness, we already have a bunch. <laughs> oh, from yesterday. I was like, you guys are quick out there. Uh, so just use your Zoom chat box or if you're on Facebook, just use your chat there and leave a comment. Um, but we'll just get going. Give a shout out to Teresa. All right, so we got some, hi, Teresa. We've got some petitions for healthcare professionals, civil and religious leaders. For JT, God bless you, JT. For poor souls, uh, for the most vulnerable and isolated. Oh my goodness, these are rolling by. For the most vulnerable and isolated, for protection and thanksgiving. For those that are not affected by the coronavirus. For the sick and their caregivers. Thank you so much for these petitions. And thank you also for the prayer of Thanksgiving. That's always so good to see amidst of all these things that we need, um, finding things to give thanks for. It's, it's so good for, for our souls. Uh, my heart is overflowing with pride. It's so grateful for a community that was so kind when they came by my grandson's house yesterday for his sixth birthday. There were 31 honking decorated vehicles and three fire engines. My grandson was so happy, overwhelmed, and emotional that halfway through the parade, he started to cry along with his mom, my daughter, with gratitude. My heart is so full, and we are so blessed. That's so beautiful. Thank you, Dee. For patience and gentleness within our families, within this time of lots of togetherness. Yeah. Pray for peace and patience. Mm -hmm. My mom is making masks for people. That's great, Tatiana. That's such an awesome ministry. And Thanksgiving for the gift of the Eucharist. Hey, thank you, Emily. And uh, just so you know, another word for the day, we just did epiclesis, that Greek word. So Eucharist, if you remember, is an old uh, word also, which means Thanksgiving. So when we get together to receive the Eucharist, we give thanks. And Thanksgiving for a nice day. May we all get out and enjoy it and treasure God's gift of nature. Yeah. Uh, back here in Des Moines, I think if you've been following this show at all, it's been mostly bad weather and we're back to bad weather. So we had a few nice days and uh, now we're back to kind of a, almost like a London fog kind of a thing. Well, thank you. These came fast and furious. And if you continue to post and I don't happen to read them in this show, we'll get to them tomorrow because um, we have such a great crew that keeps track of everything and we want to make sure your prayers are heard. And, uh, and you can always post in our virtual prayer wall, which we'll bring up now.
And Lord, we thank you for um, these desires that you put in us and we vocalize them in our prayers. And Lord, we ask you to bless these petitions according to your time and your gracious will. Amen. So thank you again for being with me today uh, on this Tuesday. Again, everything about our show can be found on sadlyreligion.com slash morning prayers. Uh, encourage somebody to leave a petition on the virtual prayer wall. Um, and thank you for sharing out these videos with friends and family. So why don't we end with a blessing? In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you this day. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great day.